Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Ordinary Council meeting of the 7th of April 2020. Um, this is our second attempt at a uh, council meeting online. We had our council briefing last Tuesday, which went well, so we hope for the same this evening. I'd like to declare the meeting open at 6.02 p.m. and start by acknowledging that we meet on the lands of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, item two, apologies. We have all um, nine council members accounted for this evening, so we do not have any apologies. Um, item three, public question time and receiving of public statements. Uh, CEO, do we have um, any questions received this evening? Uh, yes, through you, Mayor Cole, we have several, and uh, if you allow me, I'll read them out with a proviso that we are looking at an option to be able to allow members of the public to uh, record by video their questions and submit them and for us to play them, or we might be able to convert to a webinar option, uh, so um, members of the public would be able to um, call in and participate in the meeting. Uh, public questions are received. The first is from Mr. Colin Scott of North Perth, uh, who's asked, what sort of rate relief will ratepayers get in July, August, only three months away? And what is council doing about temporarily relieving some full-time staff from their payroll? And will these staff use up any accrued leave, including long service leave while temporarily being off the payroll? The second uh, question is from Mary Slart of West Perth. Please let us know when action is going to be taken to deal with the speeding traffic in Colvin Lane. Though there aren't quite as many vehicles using the lane due to the coronavirus, those which continue to use the lane still continue to speed. A motion was put to council at the electors AGM on January 28, 2020, which was then brought up as an item 12.2 at council meeting on March 17, 2020 the outcome of which in the due date timeframe for completion section was simply recorded as to be confirmed. As already described, there's only a small section of Colburn Lane which needs to be attended to, i.e. the section from the junction of the unnamed lane running at the rear of the houses at the eastern section of Strathcona Street to the entry exit of Strathcona Street. Our neighbours and I do not want to have our car smashed into when exiting our garages in Colburn Lane, coupled with the fact that should this happen, we have no legal recourse. To finish, I'm asking council to please be responsible and do your best to protect your great powers from unnecessary injury, especially when you've been alerted to need in Colman Lane. The third is from Lisa Coyle of Mount Lawley in relation to item 12.3. I was only informed that council was preparing to sell the land currently used for public recreation by telephone and follow up email on Friday, the third of the fourth, 2020. My heritage listed home abuts this public recreation area. I understand that the officer's recommendation to council is that it approves that this 500 square metre lot be sold to allow two residences to be built, each of up to three storeys high. I want to formally register my strong opposition to this recommendation. Available land for public recreation within walkable distances from homes is in short supply in the city and with the proliferation of high density dwellings and nearby streets, this small plot provides an essential and safe place. I've lived next door for 20 years and over the decades, have watched as the small place constantly evolves the diversity of the residents. This park has been used by local families and some living in nearby high rise buildings for celebrations, even a bridal shower, picnics, children learning to ride bicycles, bocce, cricket games, and of course, a multitude of dog owners on a daily basis. While the council does maintain the property, I would hasten to add that local residents also contribute to ensuring the property remains free of litter and graffiti. It has been an oasis for our local community, bordered as it is by major city streets, which require adults or company children to cross. It would be a travesty if its future use as public recreation space by many existing residents and ratepayers is traded for the one-off benefit of just two future residents. The City of Vincent prides itself on putting people before profit for protecting local amenity and sustainable green land use options. The destruction of this public space does not achieve this lofty ideal, nor would permitting two three-storey developments overlooking the backyards of nearby residents meet Department of Planning design principles in terms of maintaining the context and character of this quiet wedge of residential development bounded as it is by major roads. As you'll be aware, design principle nine expands on the need for development applications to respond to community needs, 
including the facilitation of social interaction. This mere 500 square metre lot is the only area within this residential wedge which does in fact permit social interaction. I urge councillors not to take this public recreation space from our community for what really amounts to minimal short-term financial gain. There is no reversing such a short-sighted decision. I would like to express my disappointment at the lack of community consultation and adequate notice given for our small but united community to respond. Uh, the next question and statement comes from Ms. Norell O'Neill of Mount Hawtham in relation to 12.3. I wish to lodge my and my family's strong objection to the city even contemplating selling off parts of Brenton Street Reserve, let alone actually allowing it to happen. You've all been granted the privilege of being the custodians, not owners of the city's much loved open spaces, so you can protect and nurture them for future generations. What gives you or the persons who propose their sale the right to sell what doesn't belong to you? Open spaces belong to the community for healing, not profiteering developers. Now more than ever, people need the comfort and solace of space and nature, and these regularly used precious green areas are the quiet home of massive mature native trees and their wild inhabitants. To sell them for development is environmental vandalism. Please vote against such an outrageous proposal to help restore faith in the city's decision-making processes. The next statement is from Joan Wolfe, also in relation to item 12.3. I suggest that those councillors inclined to approve the proposal to sell off 5,760 square metres of land in Brenton Street, which is zoned for passive recreation and dotted with mature trees, take a long hard look at the following two documents. First, the City of Instant Greening Plan, and second, Public Open Space Strategy. Don't skim over Table 6. The next question is from Peter Lee of Highgate in relation to 12.3. Why is the city selling off land? I believe the recommendations to sell blocks of land because they have no strategic value does not make business sense and does not make financial sense. Why is the city selling public open spaces when the city goes to great lengths to close residence streets to create open spaces? Ask councillors to reject or defer the decision in order to get a better understanding of the city's financial future before making any rash decisions. The next question is from Sally Lake of Highgate in relation to item 12.3. I'm concerned that the land proposed for sale on Beaufort and Brentham Streets is described as having no current strategic use. The Brentham Street land is park land once, which once lost can never be restored. Parks are coming under increasing use both during the current pandemic, but also as the city's residential population increases. Until recent times, the car park on Beaufort Street was heavily used. Choosing to remove it at this unusual time of low demand calls into question the council's longer term support for the re-establishment of a healthy business precinct. It is possible that in the very long term, reliance on car parks may be able to be reduced, but this seems like a very inappropriate time to make that decision. And for both proposed land sales, I consider that consulting with the residential and business community is necessary to establish the community's views. The next question, which uh, is from Mr. Andrew Main of North Perth, and it covers several, four different issues. The first issue, I spoke at the council meeting in March about the continued vandalism of the property at 54 Cow Street, West Perth, and my frequent requests to the city over the past four years to ask that the owner of this heritage listed property, one of the oldest dwellings in the city with connections to the pioneering Gadup family, protect it from vandalism and damage. I specifically mentioned that part of the roof was missing and that damage from rain was entering the building would further damage the building. I'd like to report that the roof remains open and ask the city whether it has or will demand that the owner repair the roof. Furthermore, if a request has been made to the owner to repair, when was this request made and what commitment has the owner made to the city, particularly in terms of when the repairs will be made? Issue two, in November 2019, I wrote to the CEO about various concerns I have with the decision-making process and outcome of works and activities carried out at Beatty Park Reserve over the past few years. Almost five months later, I have yet to receive a written response to this correspondence. Could you please advise when I'm likely to receive a response to my correspondence? Issue three, in July 2018, the city commenced development of an integrated transport plan. Can the city please advise when it anticipates this plan to be finalized? It is intended that the plan will be made available. Uh, question, is it intended that the plan will be made available for public consideration and feedback prior to its finalization? If so, when does the city anticipate this, this consultation process will take place? Issue four, I refer to the North Perth Traffic Calming Project 
that has been underway since May 2018 when the city received a petition from local residents. The last time that the council considered this matter was in June 2019 when the item was deferred so that further engagement of the community could take place prior to a final approach being adopted. Can the city advise when the consultation is likely to take place? In December 2019, the Executive Director of Infrastructure and Environment advised that the whole process should be completed this financial year. Is this still the case? I note that since this issue was first raised by local residents, a roundabout has been installed on Wright, Lincoln Street, Highgate, and funding is also being sought through the Black Spot Program for Seagull Islands at the west and east end sections of Chelmsford Road and Fitzgerald Street, North Perth. This latter project will have impacts on the North Perth traffic coming project and I ask whether these have or will be considered. Are the two projects going to be combined as one or remain separate? Separate. What is the likely timing and installation of the Chelmsford Road, Seagull Island? Will they be installed prior to further works undertaken as part of the North Perth project? And the last statement is from Dudley Meyer of Highgate in relation to item 12.3. I would urge council members to reject the recommendation outright or at least defer a decision until such time as the administration makes public their predictions for the current, for the impact of the current situation on the city's finances and demonstrates what alternatives have, have been considered. The report is one of the worst that I've ever seen given its importance and potential impact on the city's finances. The fact that there is no justification other than the vague statement that the sale could aid the city's financial stability concerns me. It's not even definitive and there is no discussion of alternatives. The impact of selling part of the Barley Street car park is not discussed or even mentioned. I see no evidence that the administration has even considered it. If they have, why didn't they mention it? I do acknowledge that they may have touched on it when they said that they believe that the land has no current strategic use. Tell that to the Beaufort Street traders. The proposed sale of part of the Brenton Street Reserve speaks volumes. The public open space strategy did not give any indication that the reserve is, is excessive in size. The change in the recommendation from the briefing has nothing to do with a change of heart. It is just acknowledging the requirements of the Act. I contacted a local real estate agent with more than 20 years experience in the area. They said it is not a healthy time to sell land and there are cashed up developers looking for bargains. You will easily sell the land, but you won't get the best financial outcome for the city and you won't get a good outcome for the Beaufort Street traders. I'd remind council that you are here for the community's benefit, both immediate and long term. You are not here just to tick the box and make life easy for the administration. Six questions. One, has the Beaufort Street Network been informed of the intention to sell part of the Barley Street car park? And if so, on what date and what time was this done? Two, on what date and time was the chair of the Leaderville Gardens Retirement Village Board informed of the intention to use $1 million of the trust? Three, has the city considered asking the Department of Local Government, Sport and Cultural Industries to defer the payment of the $558,000 rental incentive for 246 Vincent Street? If not, why not? If so, when? Four, has the city stood down any employees or have any employees been forced to use up accrued leave? Five, what items were discussed or presented at the council workshop of 24 March? Six, given that section 3.58 of the Act does not require public notice to be given if assets are disposed of by auction or public tender, can you confirm that the disposable of that the disposable of 590 Beaufort Street will not be the subject of any public notice. Who prepared the report for item 12.3, sale of land? And Mayor Cole, that uh, concludes all the public questions and statements received for tonight's meeting. Thank you, CEO. Um, so we will move to um, confirmation of minutes. Uh, the minutes being for the meeting of so just bear with me, I've got various screens on the go here. Uh, just through you, Mayor, the next item, we've got the response to previous public questions taken on notice. So there's oh, some apologies. response. To... My apologies for missing that. I'll go back to um, the uh, 3B, response to previous public questions taken on notice. My apologies if you could please run us through those. Are you intending to read out the responses or have they been provided to the um, to the member who, the member of the community that asked the question? Through you, Mayor Cole, responses have been provided, so they're just in the minutes for record. So I don't think we need to read through all the responses. We'll just okay. um, take Thank note you. of them.
Um, so we have two sets of minutes to confirm this evening. We have the ordinary council meeting of the 17th of March, 2020. Can I please have a mover and seconder? Move Councillor Loden, seconded Councillor Hallett. All those in favour? Council Patakis, I can't see your hand. Thank you, that's passed. Um, the next set of minutes is for the special council meeting on the 30th of March, 2020. Can I please have a mover and seconder? Move Councillor Smith, seconded Councillor Patakis. All those in favour? Nine hands in the air, thank you, they're carried. Announcements by the presiding member. Um, I have been so busy, I haven't prepared any specific announcements other to the CEOs keep waving at me. Oh, so, so Mayor, I, I just wanted to bring your attention to item five, which was receiving of petitions and to note that we did receive a petition from Miss Anne Chapel of King William Street and- Oh, my apologies. Um, yes. But I could talk through that if you'd like. Okay, so we're just noting at point five, receiving petitions, deputations and presentations, that we have received a petition from Anne Chapel of King William Street, Bayswater, along with 694 signatures requesting that Council bring back the Friends of Anzac Cottage Incorporated. This means re-instituting community engagements for the historical house, including monthly open days, wartime, commemorations and additional visits for schools and social groups. So I do need to then put a motion forward for the receiving of the petition. Um, is there a, a recommended course of action, CEO? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, the four options for council are that the petition be received, uh, second, that the petition be received and a report be pre prepared, C, that the petition be received and referred to a committee for consideration and report, or D, that the petition be received and be dealt with by council. We'd recommend that A, that the petition be received, noting that we are in uh, close and frequent contact with the Friends of Anzac Cottage and also the current uh, leaseholder, the Vietnam Veterans Association. And uh, we're working with the Friends of Anzac Cottage on their community engagement program. And given those discussions are ongoing, uh, we'd like the opportunity to uh, continue that uh, discussion with the Friends of Anzac Cottage and hope to um, continue uh, its good work around the cottage. Um, I'm not I'm not sure. Um, there could be value in uh, um, the petition being received and a report being prepared so that those actions could actually, actually be publicly documented and brought to the council. Mm -hmm. That would certainly be my preference, but I don't yep. think to move and second items, but um, if council, Councillor Howard, are you indicating that you wish to to move that the petition be received or that the petition be received and a report prepared? Uh, with the report prepared, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councillor Hallett. Is that seconded? Seconded by Councillor Smith. Um, Councillor Hallett, do you wish to speak to it? Councillor Smith. Right, okay, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Thank you, nine hands in the air. Just so if you're wondering why I'm taking time, I'm actually citing all nine hands before I call the vote. So uh, thank you for drawing my attention to item five and apologies for missing that. We have confirmed the minutes. Um, announcements by the presiding member. I haven't formally prepared announcements, but we are in a very much a sort of changing and moving situation. We have noticed that the pace of announcements have not been as heavy as the last fortnight, but we're now, um, you know, the most significant announcements these this week was the hard closure of the West Australian border um, and also uh, movements within um, within uh, Perth and Peel and other regions being um, that you cannot go outside your regional area. And today we have had a pretty um, interesting and uh, weighted upon announcement from the Prime Minister in relation to landlords and rents, which has been an incredibly pressing issue for our local business community. 
Um, we did meet with our town team chairs last week, and this was certainly the issue that they raised with us as the number one issue facing town centres and local businesses generally within the city of Vincent. So um, we, are, we are working through the detail of that announcement, but it is um, certainly taking steps well beyond the six months prevention of uh, eviction, actually dealing with um, rent relief. Um, so that, that um, just was announced uh, this afternoon and our policy in place team are reviewing that and uh, we'll be providing further information uh, to council and also to our local business community. Um, we've just had our first meeting of the COVID committee. Uh, we had a number of items this evening, mainly for noting, and it was good to see other council members um, join and uh, uh, observe, so thank you for that. Um, but basically that's a regular meeting every Tuesday at 5 p.m. where we will see uh, rolling changes come through to the COVID-19 relief and response strategy and implementation plan. Um, some of the other major changes this week and um, on the basis of decisions that were made last late last week for changes around our playgrounds. Um, we are seeing our, our rangers take on much more of a community safety role, um, certainly not infringing um, and parking ranges have been reallocated to uh, looking at uh, parks and, and uh, physical distancing measures. Um, the playgrounds have been where they have uh, fences and gates, they have been cable tied shut with signage and we're now looking at usage around parks, um, putting in place more um, orange flags around playgrounds where there aren't fences and considering um, looking at measures such as one way traffic around very heavily utilised footpaths in our parks, such as Hyde Park. So we do have a very big weekend ahead. And we have really beautiful weather forecasts. So it's just a reminder to our community that physical distancing measures are so important. Our state is doing incredibly well with the numbers. I'm noting that we do have a number, a very small number of people with COVID-19 in the city of Vincent. And for those members of our community we send our well wishes to you and your families at this time that you're going through that. And we also congratulate the rest of our community in terms of accepting these very significant measures that are impacting our lives and the way in which they um, have been taken up and respected so well. Um, our rangers are um, an increased force at our parks and they are playing an um, educative role for our community. Uh, in terms of enforcement, that is still reliant upon the police. They don't, the, our rangers do not have special powers, but they're certainly observing, collecting data, looking at increased use, um, referring back to our manager of health to talk about what new measures may need to be put in place to deal with that and um, responding where needed. So we do ask people over the Easter long weekend to please just be very conscious. We're doing incredibly well, let's keep it up it is making a really big difference to the number of cases in Perth and in Western Australia. So I just wanted to say thank you very much to the community. Okay, um, declarations of interest, CEO, have we received any declarations? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, no, we haven't received any declarations of interest. Thank you, CEO. Um, in accordance with our meeting procedures, I'll go first to the item that was raised by members during public question time. Um, I note that we did have a number of questions that were not um, uh, pertinent to the business on council's agenda, and those um, questions will be answered and included in the minutes. But for um, the, the item that was um, that did have a number of questions during public question time and is on tonight's agenda is item 12.3. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, did you want to um, see if there are any questions to be moved on bulk? Ah, oh, yes. Um, this is a small agenda, but there might still be questions that um, items that councils wish to move on block. Um, so in terms of public question time, we've had 12.1 raised. Um, in, in the other questions, I note we don't have any absolute majority decisions and we do not have any financial or proximity interests, so it does remain open to Council to pull out other items that they wish to debate and the others we can move on block. Um, so I'll just go, this is the way that I'm visually seeing you, so I'll start with Councillor Wallace. Are there any items that you wish to 
bring forward for debate this evening? No? Councillor Patakis? Uh, 9.1 and 9.2 now. Uh, Councillor Hallett? 11.4. Uh, Councillor Loden? No. Councillor Smith? Sorry, technical issues. Um, no, thank you. 12.3 for me, but that's it. Thank you. 12.2, did you say? 12.3. 12.3, sorry. Okay. I noticed that 12.2 has been withdrawn, just to note that 12.2 has been withdrawn. Um, Councillor Toppelberg? No, Councillor Castle? Councillor Gondoshevsky? That's everyone. I'll just check. Um, okay. uh, through you, Mayor Cole, Councillor Hallett uh, had a comment. Oh, sorry, Councillor Hallett. Sorry, Mayor. Can I also ask for 12.4? 12.4. Councillor Hallett? No. Councillor Smith? Sorry, we've got 11.4, which we need to bring forward because we need to make appointments. So we've got that. So um, these are the items that have been called forward, CEO. So then you could then go through the on block items. Mm -hmm. If I can read you out the one that we're dealing with tonight, 9.1, 9.2, 11.4, 12.3, and 12.4. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, through you, Mayor Cole, um, I will read out the agenda items which haven't been raised by a member of the public or pulled out for debate and discussion by council members. Uh, the agenda items that uh, I have to be proposed to be moved on block, uh, item 9.3, uh, number 382 Newcastle Street, West Perth. Item 11.1, .1, investment report. Item 11.2, authorisation of expenditure. Item 11.3, financial statements. Item 12.1, results of the Australasian LG Performance Excellence Program, and item 12. Point, no, sorry, uh, I've got information bulletin as item 12.5. Can I just confirm with Councillor Hallett that it was the review of the electronic council proceedings or the information bulletin? Yeah, so. Uh, 12.4, yeah. The electronic council proceedings, so, in, so the, 12.5 information bulletin to be moved uh, on block as well. Thank you, CEO. So we're moving on 9.3, 11.1, 11.2, 11.3, 12.1, 12.5. Can I have a mover and seconder, please? Move Councillor Loden, seconded Councillor Wallace. All those in favour? Councillor Gonchewski, are you voting? Thank you. You're, you're last. That's why you have to leave your hand up for longest. <laughs> that's nine hands. Thank you. The on block items have been moved. So I'll go back to 12.3, which was the item um, on this evening's agenda raised during public question time. This is a uh, sale of miscellaneous portions of city freehold land. Could I please have a mover and seconder? Moved Councillor Gondoshevsky. Seconded Councillor Hallett. Thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I'm not necessarily opposed to the city reviewing its land holdings. Um, I think it's appropriate that the city review um, all high value assets that come with maintenance costs to make sure that what we've got is fit for purpose. But, um, and I, so in, uh, I guess ultimately I'm appreciative that this process has been commenced and that we are discussing uh, the city land. Um, because I do think that strategic land sales can potentially contribute to the achievement of our strategic goals. And I think it is important to note that our public open space strategy actually does contemplate this in certain circumstances. Um, and I recognise that um, we need to be having discussions and decisions of councils so that 
um, we can dispose of property um, and also potentially foreshadow the discussion or bring forward the discussion around these land sales um, so that we can incorporate them into our long-term uh, financial planning and strategic thinking. Um, however, I'm not satisfied with this report and I won't be supporting this item. Um, I'll be upfront that I don't believe that there's a case been made for the sale of the Brentham Street lots and I will be would be very concerned around the loss of mature trees on sites. I can share concerns related, raised by residents in relation to consultation on a number of the lots put forward. Um, and I think that um, perhaps the, some of the missing piece of the puzzle is around um, an analysis or a comparison between um, the audit and, and evaluation that was done as part of the preparation of our public open space strategy um, so that we can satisfy ourselves that um, the land holdings, if they were sold, aren't going to create a public open space access issue for sectors of our community. Um, so uh, whilst overall I'm supportive of having this conversation, I think that um, we need to be very clear in our reporting on this matter um, and our conversations with the community. I don't think this report is, uh, is appropriate at this stage and um, so I won't be supporting it and I'll look to support the alternative that's been prepared. Thank you, Councillor Gondoshevsky. Uh, the second was Councillor Pollitt. I'll go to you, Councillor. Um, thank you. I guess similarly, I don't feel that I can support the report as is. Um, mostly for me, I guess, in terms of the issues I raised through questions last week around the consultation um, and the incorporation of thinking through consultation in this. I think even if we don't um, require consultation um, through legislation around certain um, decisions like this, I think it's really important for us to at least um, Look, look to our policy or um, broader consultation engagement principles that we have as a city. And I think that um, in this case, the selling of land is um, for me a, a high priority to engage with the community around. Um, I think also, I guess the, the differences between the lots of land um, would be useful to separate out, um, which I think it has been in the um, alternative that's been proposed. Um, so yeah, I can't support it as is. I think there needs to be a, a stronger rationale for some of these. And I think um, particularly the ones that are um, potentially open space as is, um, linking them to the public open space strategy and um, potential purchase of other land would be important as well. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Pollock. Um, Councillor Pollock, I'll go to does anyone wish to speak to this, Councillor Smith? Thank you. Um, I agree um, with both Councillor Hallett and Councillor Gondoshevsky, where this is a discussion that we um, that we should have. It's a, it's there's nothing wrong with having this discussion. Um, <clears throat> we um, we do have uh, we do have land, and it's it's good to to have a look um, and see. <clears throat> what um, if it can be if it can be used into our strategic planning for um, future for down the track in either open space or land that's not being well utilised, etc. Um, we also need to also have a a realistic look at our um, financially how we will be looking after after this, and I think it's important that we review our um, financial. Um, status first before any decisions like this are made. Um, <clears throat> but And I also believe that um, we pride ourselves in our consultation with our community and this is obviously very important as it's, as we can see via the comments from our community um, and that we should definitely do consultation um, with it. So um, I won't be, I won't be supporting this as it stands tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, Councillors, any further comments? Um, well, just to say that I do note that um, administration is bringing this item forward because we um, do need to look at our land holdings in terms of 
uh, whether they're being well utilised, whether the public open space is uh, in the in a good position, as Councillor Gondrzewski has talked about in relation to our uh, land analysis that has been um, completed as part of our public open space strategy. Um, but I note that um, it's a difficult time for um, council to be making decisions around large tracts of land um, when we're just starting into a crisis. It is also, it's an opportune time in terms of actually looking at our land holdings and what we need to do with it, but we need to do that in a way where we bring the community along with us and we explain why and we're clear about um, the decision making and give an opportunity for the community to engage in that and understand and, and provide their feedback to us. Um, some of the land holdings that have been put forward as part of this recommendation um, have been put forward on a time frame of up to 18 months. Um, there's no reason why we wouldn't consult and um, I think that that is really important. We've seen that just from the few people that have taken note, we've had quite a response from um, public question time tonight in relation to that. And I think, for example, if you look at the Barley Street car park where we currently own one out of the three lots operating as that car park, we have a lease that's due to expire in February 21 and we're currently um, paying uh, residents and ratepayers both commercial and residential rates towards um, $75,000. Okay, I declare it lost unanimously. Is there an alternate motion on the table? I need someone to speak to me if you're about to move it, otherwise there will um, be. I'm happy to move the alternate that um, you prepared, Mayor Cole, for discussion. Okay. I think we probably do need to um, screen share that one manager of governance because that hasn't gone out with the public papers. Is there a seconder for the alternate motion? Happy to second it, me. Thank you, Councillor Patakos. Um, thank you, Mayor. I um, am satisfied with this alternate in that it removes the Monmouth Street and Beaufort Street lots from the um, I guess the council agreement to sell. Um, I am satisfied that there is um, that item four within this um, alternate motion um, talks about the um, provide public notice of the well talks about I guess engaging with the community in relation to the sale of the following lots. Um, and that item seven talks about um, proceeds of land sales going into reserve um, that would be created or determined by council at a uh, budget adoption. Um, I am, uh, I think that um, I'm, I would probably, <sighs> I am less um, certain in relation to the uh, item 4.4 in terms of uh, the portion of lot 75 on Brentham Street Reserve. Um, and um, I guess at this point in time, because this alternate motion does not have um, clear guidance on what portion, um, I would... Um, probably be seeking to, um, I'll let the conversation flow, but I'd be seeking to um, gain some further information in relation to what portion is considered to be included in the discussion with the community um, and would uh, possibly seek to amend to remove that item within the, the motion. Um, that's all I've got to say for now, ma'am. Some questions just later. 
So there is a plan to accompany that. I'm just going to ask the manager if you could please share that plan to show you the land suggested in item 4.4. Through you, Mayor Cole, I've shared the plan on the screen now. So it's the portion that is between the Rosewood Aged Care um, Centre and Lot 37, which used to have the Aaron Moore Primary School's Music House on it. It's now been uh, cleared, ready for the land exchange. Um, and we can refer to this plan in the recommendation, so I can amend the wording if you would like. Um, look, I'll let the second to speak, but I, um... I'm not at this stage inclined to have a conversation with the community in relation to the rear portion um, at this point in time. I'm, I'm, I'm without further justification in relation to the consideration of that land being excess. Um, I would um, seek to amend at this point in time. <laughs> Okay, we have resumed Wi-Fi at the City of Vincent. Um, I'll go to the seconder. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I think what um, Council is on the of this um, was the removal of that um, rear portion of lot 75 um, from consideration. And I, I think I, I take it that um, some of those concerns relate back to um, the future and having some control over the mature trees and mature tuits um, on those lots. And, and likewise, um, I have similar concerns um, regarding the regarding of that in, uh, at this point in time. Um, I think for me, in looking through uh, this report and having been involved in this for many years, um, the report did lack... Uh, I think the greater detail and rationale and um, needed to really dig deeper with regards to the strategy and methodology, um, you know, the method of sale um, and importantly as um, previously as comments with the previous um, um, recommendation, um, councillors touched on the importance of community consultation. Um, the, these are sort of the, the times that irrespective of what's required under the Act, I think we do have a duty and we know that our community um, really seek to, to be um, consulted on quite deeply with regards to the sale of assets. Uh, I think also too in the context of the current um, budget um, that the community need, need to really be brought up to speed um, in terms of you know, the current um, budget difficulties. And I think the future further discussions um, will actually allow that. So I'm fully supportive of, the, um, of this motion, but I will seek that if there is a removal on that consideration on um, portion of Lot 75, if that's what Councillor Gondoszewski was alluding to, um, then I'm happy to amend um, uh, the amended motion to uh, the uh, alternate motion to Which councillors would like to speak to the substantive motion? Councillor Toppelberg. Thank you, Mayor. So a couple of things um, from me. So the I am I'm not supportive of the motion as it's as it's written. I don't. Uh, I think that the. Um, the timing of the way and the way in which it's been written. So, for example, uh, the way in which uh, Clause 1 is written, whilst the principle is to uh, effectively delegate responsibility uh, to the, the COVID-19 Relief and Recovery Committee to determine whether the timing is appropriate in terms of the best gains for the city, uh, to me it wraps the the idea of, uh, of the, the sale uh, into the current situation that people find themselves in globally. I think, um, for example, that the the, uh, the Vincent Street lot, uh, the timing that's most appropriate for that to be sold uh, relates to the fact that the adjacent lot 
um, which is a residential house, is currently for sale. Uh, I think that if the uh, owners of that property or the agent who's representing them want to make an approach to the city um, uh, or to engage or the city wants to discuss with them, that's something that can be dealt with separately. But the idea of uh, agreeing to the sale uh, to the sale of that land, for example, if it was only available on its uh, on its own, uh, I think that that's a conversation that needs to be um, that needs to be had more broadly. I, I can't see uh, that land even being saleable without the adjacent land available, given the uh, the road widening provisions that exist. Um, and I think, for me personally, the uh, actually I will ask. Well, uh, the provision of a public notion uh, public notice of the potential land sales that's listed in uh, item four. Um, I think we should maybe just take a step back. I don't think there is, if there is no urgency to any of this, and I certainly don't feel that there is, uh, other than potentially that that lot which has an adjacent lot um, currently for sale, which would have some uh, bearing on its value. Uh, the What's proposed, uh, I would actually rather either defer, preferably defer the item uh, and request uh, that a report be provided to council uh, uh, of the identification of certain lots uh, potentially for sale. Um, but I, I think the language around the way this is written, uh, it is seen that the consultation relates to the sale of the land, not necessarily the potential. I do understand the way that, um, that recommendation four uh, has been written, uh, but I don't think there's enough information about our current budget situation, our protected, projected budget situation, or the potential uh, allocation of the funds. I know Councillor Loden had uh, made some comments that relate to the um, uh, the POS strategy calling for funds to be put in the public open space reserve. Uh, I'm not saying if we are to sell, we have to know exactly where every cent is going because that's not necessarily the reason for sale. But um, I think for me, this motion has been written as a response to what was uh, put up by administration uh, and that's fair enough, but I don't think it pulls back far enough. I would rather see it deferred and we actually have the conversation with the community uh, about our asset position and our financial position together uh, and we move forward from there. So as it stands, I'm not supportive of the motion. Councillor, for speaking to the substantive. All right, well, I'll speak in favour of this alternate motion. Um, we are facing a pretty dire financial situation and we already knew that with our long-term financial plan that we needed to have funding in our reserves. Um, this motion is talking about land sales of two portions of land that have no use or value, perhaps only to the neighbours. We have had an indication of a neighbour that they have interest. Um, it does state that a minimum price would be set. Um, obviously, if the price wasn't right, the land wouldn't be sold. And uh, it is actually attempting to deal with the fact that we are uh, bleeding revenue and that we have an incredibly difficult financial situation ahead of us. Let's just be frank about that. Very difficult. And land sales take a long time. I see no issue in not moving ahead with those two portions of land. They hold no value for community use and they are very much appear to be road reserve. In relation to the other lots of land, this is about advertising and giving the community an opportunity to have a say. Um, this is about land where we have um, you know, discussed whether uh, we can hold this for the future in terms of Beaufort Street and the issues that we face with the cost of continuing the Barley Street car park. Are we going to be in a financial situation where we can pay $75,000 per annum in fees? And that's when you take into consideration the revenue that has come in through pre-COVID car parking. Um, I think that we'll probably be under even more pressure in terms of who's parking there um, post pandemic, probably not as bad as what we're experiencing currently, but it's gonna take time to recover. And we just need to be real about what we can afford and whether we can afford to run a car park that costs us $75,000 per year pre-COVID. In relation to um, Monmouth Street, again, it's about allowing time for the community to comment. We've already heard from some community members that this is not something that they wish us to entertain, but this is a formal, this would be a formal process that allows that to be advertised widely and to seek views. And I agree that each piece of land that we're contemplating, 
when advertising needs to be placed within the context of the public open space strategy, needs to be placed within the context of our 2020-21 budget and long-term financial plan, which by the time we would actually be moving to consider any sale post community consultation, we would have the understanding of our financial position, both for next year and the long-term financial plan. In relation to Brentham Street, if you're going to amend 4.4, please amend 4.3, because there is absolutely no point in selling 4.3, not 37, and keeping lot 75 behind that, because you're killing the access to that land. The two need to be considered together. And the idea behind this is that it is land that is utilised by the Catholic primary school adjoining and it gives them an opportunity to put forward their views and consider whether they would like to purchase it for play space, which is pretty much exclusively used by the Catholic primary school. It is not good access to the community. It's adjoining the Brentham Street Reserve, but it's disjointed from it and forms no cohesive part of it. So please do not amend to allow the sale of lot 37, but not the rear lot. That is just creating an access issue. Um, I think this is about uh, contemplating the sale of land now with the community, talking with them, getting their views, so that when we actually understand our financial situation, which is pretty serious, we can then move to make these decisions because we've advertised it and we've had community feedback. Um, this is not about a land sale fire sale. This is about pulling this back to something that is reasonable and that is happening in consultation with our community, except for two plots of land, which are really only of value to those adjoining neighbours. I get that and possibly won't sell because either they don't want to buy them or the price isn't right. So I see very little risk here in moving forward in this way. And what I'm doing is trying to allow the community to engage with us on these land sales at a time where we will have an idea of what our 2021 budget looks like and what our long-term financial plan looks like. And to be honest, it's gonna be pretty bad. So I think we do need to move forward and actually demonstrate where we have land that is potentially underutilized, potentially unaffordable to maintain in the context of the Barley Street car park or is land that is of value perhaps to Aramore Primary School, but not to our greater community, we need to consider that and we need to put it on the table for discussion now. So I strongly support this and I seek your support in moving forward. Councillors, Councillor Toppelberg, you've already spoken. Do you wish to ask yeah. a question? Question, if I may. Uh, so questions through you to the CEO. Um, so the Mayor spoke about uh, effectively uh, a business case or some matters that relate, uh, for example, to the um, Beaufort Street lot in the car park. As the, uh, that's information that's not contained in any detail in the existing report that was voted against by council. Uh, and as the recommendation or the, um, the, uh, the motion that is before us says it calls for a public notice of the potential sale, can we get an indication from you from the CEO what that public notice would look like and whether that sort of information or business case or otherwise is required by the motion to be provided to the community at at this point, not at the point of sale, uh, but at the, at the point uh, as per the motion that's there. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, I can ask the uh, Executive Manager of Governance to comment on the public notice requirement. Through you, Michael, can I just clarify, are you referring to the lots in recommendation four? So the Barley Street, uh, Car Park, Monmouth Street? Correct. In, so in particular, the uh, both the lots um, uh, number 590 Beaufort Street, uh, where there is a, uh, with, there are business matters that specifically impact upon the city that have been spoken about but appear neither in the existing uh, or the, the, the previous report that was voted down my understanding is if it goes to public notice that those there's no requirement for that conversation uh, to be had openly with community the way that it's currently constructed. Is that correct? Uh, no, my reading is that it's requesting the CEO to provide public notice of the potential sale. So before starting like the sale process in accordance with the Act and providing statutory public notice, we'd actually be engaging with the community, get their comments on whether they're 
um, what their view is on selling this lot. So with the Bali Street car park lot, we'd be looking at, at consulting with the adjacent owners, with the town teams, um, and you know consulting as much as possible. So then we can um, review the community's feedback and then look at what timing is appropriate, what method of sale. So we have different op options. We can sell it um, through an auction or we could engage directly with a um, potential purchaser to progress the sale and then provide public notice. So to commence the process, we'd be providing as much public notice as possible. And through you, Mayor Cole, what we would need to make public is any uh, issues that we are aware of that could impact the value of that land, uh, but the uh, internal nature of our arrangements with the private landowner adjoining the lot we own uh, uh, would not necessarily impact the value of that land for a future use. Uh, so just a further question through you, Mayor Cole. Just uh, would the addition of a, so uh, potentially as a, as a as an amendment, so a clause six and renumbering six and seven, um, but a clause six that required a business case to be presented in the event that any or all of the lots referred to in um, clause four were to be uh, recommended to proceed with a sale, if there was a requirement for a business case, uh, which would include where the funds were to go to, uh, what would be the impost on the city's administration of providing that business case? Through you, Mayor Colm, I could ask the manager to comment on that as well. I think there's a threshold for when a business case is required. Manager, can you just confirm what that threshold would be? But the uh, the internal Ministry of Cost of preparing that would be offset by uh, the potential sale values. So that would be something which administration um, could obviously uh, undertake in anticipation of um, sales revenue to offset that. Uh, much smaller administrative cost. Through you, Mekho, I don't think a business case would be required um, since this wouldn't meet the threshold for a major land transaction. So based on our current um, operating revenue, I think it's about $6 million. I don't think um, like the Bali Street car park lot would be unlikely to reach that threshold. Uh, and like the CEO said, uh, the administrative burden of preparing a business case would be very minimal. And I think that's something we could do once we got all the community's feedback and that would help uh, council make, in a, make a decision on how to progress with the sale. Uh, and through you, Mayor Cole, just a final comment on that. We, we are having, uh, and we have scheduled discussions with uh, the private owner of the other lots on the Barter Street car park in the near future. Uh, and we can have this discussion both about uh, the current lease and the expiry date of that and Council's consideration of um, a potential land transaction in the future. Uh, councillors, I think the expectation would be that in moving forward with any potential land sales and consulting the community that the full picture would need to be told. Um, and that this isn't just about putting an ad in a paper that's um, very plain and simple, but actually explaining the context of our financial situation, explaining, for example, the Bali Street car park uh, occupancy and cost to the community. So that's the way that I foresee that that would happen. That's certainly my expectation. Councillors, Councillor Gronczewski. Thank you, Mayor. Um, sorry, I've just seen on the screen sharing that. Did, did, did Councillor Tomberg, did you move that amendment? Sorry. No, sorry, to... just put it there. Okay. Um, look, I guess I'm, uh, I'll move an amendment to item four um, so that it states that it requests that the Chief Executive Officer consult with the community, comma, including on-site signage, comma, re regarding, and then delete to provide public notice of. Um, etc. And then remove items 4.3 and 4.4. 4. 
for a second of the image. It's nice if you want to do that in two parts. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'll do the body part first and then the removal of the um, item 4.3 and 4.4. Okay, so the, um, the first part we're dealing with is to change uh, clause four to read that the requested chief executive officer to provide, to consult with the community, including on-site signage um, on the potential sale of, etc. Is that correct? Yep, and that's seconded Councillor Castle. Do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Bondashevsky? Councillor Castle, do you wish to speak to it? Uh, no. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak to the amendment? Councillor Toppelberg? Uh, only that uh, if it's clause five, we'd need to change to get rid of the words public notice and include consultation instead. If there's no public notice. Tuszewski, are you happy to include in your amendment that clause five would also change from, from as a result of the public notice to as a result of the uh, community consultation? Seconder, are you happy with that amendment? Thank you, Councillor Toppelberg. Are there any comments on the amendment? Councillor Patakis? Um, I've just got a question for you, Mayor, just um, with the removal of the, um, the um, public notice period, what that what that means in terms of process moving, moving forward. I'll go to the Manager of Governance. Through you, Mayor Cole, it doesn't mean we wouldn't do um, the statutory public notice as well, so that would come later. This is an additional step, like the Mayor said previously, to look at um, you know, conveying to the community why we would be going ahead with this land sale, talking to the adjacent business owners, the town teams. So it's an additional step of um, community consultation or public notice. Um, so maybe it's, uh Sorry, through you, may maybe then with um, is request that the, C the Chief Executive Officer um, undertake a community consultation process, including um, it's just a really wordsmithing smithing that uh, to be a little bit clearer then. Um, manager, do you believe to change the wording for the uh, intent to be you, clear? Um, in recommendation five, it currently says, well, as proposed to be amended, so that we present the submissions of the community consultation to council for consideration and determination of the timing and method for the sale of any portions. So potentially we need to expand that from the Brentham Street resort lots. Um, we need to change that to lots 59 and lot 48. And then that is saying that any um, sale would be in accordance with section 3.58 or 3.59 of the Local Government Act, which is where the statutory requirement for public notice comes from. So we would be doing that statutory public notice um, subsequent to this community consultation. So I think if we change the reference to the Brentham Street Reserve to lots 59 and 48, that would cover um, what you're suggesting, Councillor Patakis? Perhaps we could just refer to the lots referred to in clause four, because clause four may or may not change. Would that satisfy the need manager? Yes, through you, Mayor I think if we just remove, um, so of any portions of the Brentham Street Reserve, then that would cover it. So just remove, but would then read for um, the timing and method for the sale. Which, yeah, which will be in accordance with section 3.58 or 3.59 as appropriate. Okay, I'm just going to go to the mover and seconder for this amendment just to check whether you are comfortable with that or whether you'd like us to just deal with the amendment as is and then we can come back to this. Are you comfortable with your, adding that to your amendment? Yeah, I'm fine. Councillor Castle? Um, I, the only small change I would say is the timing and method of any sale, just so that there's not a foregone conclusion that there will be a sale. Going back to the mover, we're adding any, yes, 
Okay, so that's supported by the mover and seconder of the amendment, and I'm allowing this because these are sort of technical changes that flow on from the uh, amendment being made in the first place, as opposed to being substantially different. Um, is there any further comments on this amendment? Okay, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Nine hands in the air, that's carried. We're back to the substantive. Are there any further amendments or comments? Can't see any hands in the air. So I'll put the motion. All those in favour? have nine hands in the air. Okay, thank you. That's adopted unanimously. Okay, we're now moving through the items that council members brought forward for debate and which haven't already been moved on block. The next item is 9.1, 122 Vincent Street, North Perth. Change of use to unlisted use, short term dwelling, and single house. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Pataka seconded. Councillor Toppelberg. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, just, I want to start off with a couple of questions um, through you, Mayor. Um, just with regards to. Um, the, uh, should the application be approved, um, what would be the impact or if any on the number of residential parking permits um, that are currently held uh, for that property, which um, I believe is three um, parking permits? Through you, Mayor Cole, uh, the three parking permits um, are associated with uh, the landowners residing in the single house to the rear of the property, so they would still be eligible to retain those three uh, parking permits um, associated with the single house function. Councillor Fatakis, you're on, you're on mute. Thank you. Sorry, turned it off and when it meant to turn it on. Um, thank you. Um, look, for me, I was pleased to see an application that in part um, provides a step in the right um, direction with these type of um, applications. Um, one of the conditions um, for the use of uh, short term only, uh, only rent on that was um, having the owners or, or what's commonly referred to as hosts in the Airbnb world. Uh, residing in the in the property um, at the time that it's being leased out. Um, however, my concerns are with the no on-site parking bays um, that will be provided for guests uh, and tenants and the reliant on um, street parking. And I noted in um, reading the officers' report, the officers refer to three nearby properties um, in assessing the proposed use as meeting the objectives um, of the LPS2. Um, 150 Vincent Street, which is the physiotherapy vis uh, business, has four bays, um, which include an Acrod Bay um, or disabled parking bay on site. Um, 537 William, um, which is on the uh, corner of um, Vincent and, Will um, and William, which was previously used as a short stay hotel. That's got well over 70 bays for the approximately 60 lots. So it has a substantial amount of um, off-street parking or on-site parking. And the 108 Vincent Street, uh, which came before council um, in December 2018. And look, and I remember there was um, quite a bit of de debate about this application. Um, and this application provided one on-site um, on uh, car bay, um, but there was some concerns at that stage Don't about that the impact mentally. of yeah. that change. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Um, so I just, um, I just really wanted to go back to, for me, the, uh, the biggest sticking point was um, was the lack of on um, on site parking, um, and for me, and for that reason, um, I won't be um, be supporting the uh, the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Patakis. I'm going to go to the seconder now to speak, if you wish to. 
Councillor Koppelberg. No, are there any council members wish to speak to this? No, okay, I'm gonna put it. All those in favour of the officer recommendation? Noting seven hands in the air, Councillor um, Loden is absent. All those against? Councillor Fatakis voting against. Okay, we'll move to item 9.2. 66 Lindsay Street, Perth, proposed six multiple dwellings and two home offices. This is an amendment to approved. Moved by Councillor Fatakis, I believe you raised this. Yep, moved by Councillor Fatakis. I've to the meeting. Thank you. Um, seconded by Councillor Toppleberg. Um, just for Councillor Loden's information, we've just voted on item 9.1, noting that you are absent and we move to 9.2 now. Moved by Councillor um, Fatakis, seconded by Councillor Toppleberg. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, just to have a question um, through you, it's just with regards to um, the um, conversion by home office to commercial that we've seen um, with a number of applications in the past. And I just wanted to really get some understanding about um, uh, the amendments of the current ground, ground floor to, to home office, what that would mean in the future in terms of a process if the um, uh, the future owners wanted to consider a change in use of that home office um, of to, to commercial, the, what the process would be. Through you, Mayor Cole, to clarify uh, the uh, current approval um, requires that space be used as a, a communal space for the uh, occupants and the residents and visitors within that particular premises. Um, the subject proposal is seeking to make that a home office for a particular apartment for that exclusive use. So um, ultimately that's the extent of the change. If uh, that was sought in the future to be used as a, another sort of uh, non-residential use, then uh, a development approval may be required. It depends on whether there is a particular works component or the car parking generation um, required as part of that use and the intensity of that non-residential use. So. Um, that may require a planning approval in the future. Um, if that's the case, there are all sorts of other considerations from a bu uh, building and also health perspective um, and other approvals that may be required. So it really comes down to what the intended use is in the future. The proposal before you is to simply convert that from a communal space to a home office as defined um, within the city's planning scheme. Um, thank you. Um, just Really in considering this item, I went back to my notes um, from July last year um, when the original application um, was considered. Um, and, it's, and it's often um, I look at these applications that come through and a little bit of nibbling around the e um, edges, um, careful not to inadvertently um, come with an outcome that's really far from where we, um, from acceptable from where we started. Um, I thought it was especially important to, to look at the de departures um, from the de deemed to comply standards um, that were considered uh, and particularly um, against the, the amenity and community benefits. Um, and two of these that really st uh, stuck in my mind was uh, the communal, uh, communal amenity for the ground floor area. And I note that there's been some, um, some amendments to the design of that. Um, that ground floor area, so it's uh, it's not as open on the ground ground floor areas what the original plans um, showed, um, and it's also to the amount of on structure planting and the huge reduction, the reduction from you know 123 odd square meters to 64 square meters, so about half that reduction, and I think that was significant because um, it was my understanding that that significant amount of on-site planting or on-structure planting helped mitigate against the um, the overall bulk and scale of the, the building, which was uh, some of the concerns that I had. So I go back to the original decision. I look at 
the, the compromises um, and the overall decision. I think that um, it's not only that, it was the, the reduction on the deep soil tar targets from 10% down to 7.8%, um, the ceiling heights in the ground floor, 3.5 metres, um, which would be now down to 2.9 um, metres, the visitor bays too, um, the allowance of no visitor bays on site. Um, and then I look at the, um, the further re reduction of apartment two's bedroom three um, down to 2.7 square metres, which is not a great, a great outcome in my, um, my opinion. Um, it's, it really goes to the heart of the livability um, of these properties. Um, I just can't bring myself to um, to look at agreeing to, um, to these amendments. Um, I would be um, happy to actually look at extending the, um, the development approval time, but I can see that there's been such a significant amount of changes from the original plans that have really been presented back last year that um, I, can't, I can't approve um, any, any further amendments to the, to the approval, which mean a reduction in the overall, um, some of the outcomes that... Um, like I said, I can't agree to. I'll go to the seconder. Um, yeah, I, um, I heard what Councillor Patakis has to say and uh, have no issue with her view on the matter. I do recall commenting on the strange uh, workability of what was proposed on the ground floor um, and being quite interested to see how it would evolve. Uh, my expectation was that we'd see a change of use shortly after it was built, um, but I would imagine that the change of use coming now is probably more appropriate and that space will actually get used uh, and will actually have a, a value to the development. Um, in terms of those other changes that, um, that, that have been proposed, uh, I don't disagree. They do have uh, an overall amenity impact, but for me, um, I find them uh, to be acceptable. Uh, I have given it strong consideration, but I'm happy to support the officer recommendation. Councillors, any comments? No one wishes to put on Councillor Smith. I'm just wondering, because uh, I've, I've read the report and I'm trying to find the reason why they're, they're wanting this amendment. Is there, is there a specific reason for, is it regarding sale or um, I just what's, what was the reasoning behind this amendment? I'll just go to the manager. Do you have any comment to make, manager of development? Through you, Mayor Cole. Uh, ultimately, uh, the majority of the changes were response through uh, the detailed design phase. Um, and typically these uh, changes do arise, some of them do arise as you progress from the planning um, phase through to the building permit stage. Um, and that's where uh, these departures on, um, uh, and changes were sought. Councillor Smith, do you have any further comments or questions? Okay, councillors. Okay, I'll put the motion for 9.2. All those in favour? I think I've got six hands in the air. I'm just going to call it out just to be clear. Uh, Councillor Hallett, Councillor Smith, Councillor Loden, Councillor Gontoszewski and myself. All those against? Councillor Wallace, Councillor Patakis. You missed me, Mayor. I voted for the motion. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Um, sorry. Me too. And Councillor Topple. Sorry. It's just getting used to this screen and where you all are at mixed up with our administration, our fine administration. Um, so we have Councillor Wallace and Councillor Fatakis voting against and all other council members voting for. So that motion is passed. Move on to item 11.4. Eleven point four, the reconciliation action plan working group, and the motion does require that we appoint three council members, um, a chair, and that we appoint community members. I'll ask for a mover of this item, please. Move Councillor Loden, seconded. Councillor Hallett. 
I'm happy to support the officer recommendation. I think this is a critical. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm, I've, I've got my agenda item wrong here. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry, no. I think I think we've got it should be eleven point four up on the screen, not twelve point four. I think that was just um, not uh, heard right. So if we can just go back to item eleven point four. Yeah, it, screen, is, it is 11.4 reconciliation action. I busted okay. my eyes rather than my ears. Um, yeah, so the, the right working group has been in place for a number of years now and has been very successful in helping to progress um, the City of Vincent's journey towards reconciliation. So it's great that we're forming this together again. Um, and I think it's uh, key that we have council representation as well as representation from the community, uh, community as well. Um, we have had a number of uh, community reps involved in the past, so it's great to see that this is continuing as well. Um, I know there is an amendment to this. Um, I'll, I'll let the seconder speak before we move any amendments. Thanks. But before I let you go, Councillor Lode, and I understand that you're interested in expressing interest. Yes, so uh, I um, would like to express interest to be one of the council reps, and I'm also happy to nominate to be the chair. But also, if others are interested, please do put up your hand as well. Thank you, Councillor Loden. We'll go to the second, Councillor Hallett. Um, thank you. I guess just to echo the sentiment that the importance of this group, um, and I guess some of the great work that has happened um, so far, that we should be very proud of as a city. Um, but as always, um, much still to do. So, um, and I'd also like to express my interest in being part of the group. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you, Councillor Hallett. We have someone who's ex two council members who've now expressed an interest. Council members, Councillor Topperberg. Thank you. Just uh, confirming as I emailed earlier, I'm uh, expressing interest. Uh, happy to be there. I have been for the past uh, two years, and uh, yeah, I'm, as I mentioned, I'm happy to step aside as someone who hasn't been a part of it who would like to, but also equally excited about being a part of the process as it progresses. Thank you, Councillor Toppelberg. Perhaps at this point I could just call on any other council members who may wish to nominate at this point. Um, seeing no other hands in the air, so thank you very much to Councillor Loden, to Councillor Hallett and to Councillor Toppelberg for nominating and to Councillor Loden for indicating that he um, is happy to continue as chair. Um, Appreciate that very much. Um, does anyone else wish to speak to the substantive? Councillor Loden? You're on mute, Councillor Loden. Thank you. Um, just to propose the amendment to expand the uh, RAP working group by one community member. If I can get a second, I'll speak to it. Is there a seconder for the amendment? Seconded by Councillor Hallett. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, just got to be careful how I speak to this. So, um, I think there's value in including one additional member on the community reps from the list of community reps that we have. Um, proposing community uh, member one to be included on the RAP working group. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that. If there's a need for debate, we might need to go behind closed doors for that if we're talking about specifics of individuals. Thank you, Councillor Hallett. I'll go to the seconder. You wish to speak to it? No. Does anyone wish to speak to the amendment? I'll just indicate support for the amendment. Um, so I'll, I'll call the vote on the amendment. All those in favour? Nine hands in the air. That's carried unanimously. We're back to the substantive. Are there any further comments on the substantive? Um, just to comment that it's been a good expression of interest through this process. Um, really fantastic to see that um, people who um, identify as having Aboriginal heritage are coming forward and, and nominating and being part of this, which makes it um, really uh, fantastic to, to have uh, people come on board and provide their knowledge, their cultural knowledge um, and experience and networks. Um, that's fantastic for the city. And I just would like to say thank you to... Um, staff uh, who have been running the, the RAP um, plan and the implementation. It is an important phase for us as we've moved uh, into 
uh, the Innovate stage, which is really about making, um, having impacts in, um, in uh, the sort of uh, engagement, employment and uh, use of services. So going, going beyond celebrating into actually um, offering productive uh, opportunities for Aboriginal people, Aboriginal businesses and Aboriginal communities in the city of Vincent. So thank you very much for those council members who have nominated this evening. Any further comments? I'll put it, all those in favour? Nine hands in the air, thank you very much. It's passed unanimously. Uh, that takes us to item 12.4, review of guidelines for electronic council proceedings. I have a mover, please, Councillor Hallett. Seconded, Councillor Castle. Um, I guess just somewhat of a procedural question, because I guess an identical um, report of this was passed in the previous COVID committee um, meeting just before this one. And so just wondering um, what would have happened if we'd voted differently um, at this um, because it was passed um, in the previous meeting. Sorry, through you, Mayor Cole, um, there would have been the opportunity to potentially withdraw it or you could amend the motion as well. Um, I get, I'm, very, I'm happy to support it um, for the same reasons that it was supported in the previous um, meeting by a subsection of the council. Um, I guess maybe just a comment about, um, given that we've got regular um, COVID meetings, um, if there's stuff that can be held over for the extra couple of hours um, for the full council, then um, that's probably a good thing um, anyway. Uh, it is a good question, but um, did it come to the COVID committee because this had to be adopted for the COVID committee, particularly to have electronic meetings separately to the need for the council meeting to have electronic meetings? Uh, through you, through you, Mayor Cole, uh, just to clarify, uh, as an interim measure, uh, we put these to council and the committee meeting uh, as interim guidelines, not as uh, a formal policy. Uh, and certainly not uh, amendments to the council's uh, meeting local law. Uh, and we just wanted to provide some guidance on how to deal with things like an unexpected internet outage halfway through an ordinary council meeting uh, and to have some guidance on how uh, the meeting could quickly um, proceed while that sort of electronic interruption occurred. Uh, what we explained to the uh, committee meeting prior to the ordinary council meeting uh, was that we'll look to make some amendments to these guidelines uh, prep with, an, uh, with the idea that we'd try to establish a webinar type format which would help facilitate public participation and community participation uh, in the meetings uh, and we would have, we'd be happy to take feedback and comments from elected members on these interim guidelines uh, as we work on an update to uh, council actual policy on meeting briefings uh, and forums. Thank you, Theo. Just going back to the question, um, would we actually need to adopt the guidelines separately as the COVID committee because the COVID committee is having electronic meetings or could these guidelines simply come to the uh, council meeting for adoption? Sorry, Mayor Cole, just as a procedural note item, just to note that at the COVID committee, the COVID committee was simply noting the guidelines, right. whereas council's approving them. So I have a, I have it assessed and will contribute on that basis. Um, I would not expect that um, there would have been any approval of a document by the COVID committee when, you know, literally five minutes later it was coming to council. Exactly. Anything that can come to council should come to council. That's, that's the principle. Um, okay, I'll go to the second to Councillor Castle. Thank you, Mayor Cole. Yeah, it's really just around the procedural questions about how this um, this will go will evolve. Um, you know, we've all noted that there we're working at there's um, unexpected situations that we'll have to account for. And there's already been a couple of discussions about amendments to be made to it 
do you see this as coming probably coming back to every council meeting for the foreseeable future until we settle on a process? Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, uh, we're only a couple of electronic meetings in, so we're hoping within uh, the next couple of meetings uh, we can help, we can tidy up uh, some of the technical issues and uh, how we run and present meetings uh, with that particular point around public participation. So it'd be my expectation that we'd be able to settle into uh, a smooth running and format uh, for these meetings uh, when we're undertaking it electronically. Uh, I, and the main comment I make about the guidelines would be that we need to make the guidelines and these electronic meetings work for elected members uh, who are for to make sure the information is presented, uh, easy to communicate and uh, debate, and we would adjust any of these guidelines and inform the policy based on uh, how council uh, is experiencing the meeting and making sure that that's not inhibiting in any way uh, transparency and the ability for full council consideration of issues and reports as they would if they were being held in person. Councillor Castle, do you have anything further? No, councillors just to speak to the item, ask any questions. Councillor Bonshevsky. Just one more for Mena raises by email today in relation to um, it's item two, public questions and statements, and it's the first dot point on the second page. Um, just in terms of um, that our current practice is that questions and statements at council briefings would relate to only matters that were on the agenda, um, whereas these guidelines, and whilst I note that they're not policy, we are approving them, um, just to get some commentary as to whether that is intended on being amended and represented to um, council or if it's essentially at the discretion of the presiding member um, at each session. Uh, through you, Mayor Cole, um, just a, a comment, although it's already set as the recommendation, uh, administration would be very comfortable with these guidelines as they are in their essentially draft form are just noted by council tonight pending um, over the next few days, we're going to explore the webinar format for council meetings and we could bring uh, these guidelines with the updates, including uh, the point just made by Councillor Gondoshevsky um, about uh, clarifying uh, when a question or a public statement should relate to an agenda item or not. Um, that was an oversight on, on our part. So if, the, if this item was either noted or deferred to uh, the next meeting, um, we would come back with um, probably some more definitive advice around some of those issues that have been raised. Thank you, CEO. I, I, um, I guess we, all, or Councillor Castle, um, also, oh, actually not in online commentary, but um, we noted that there was also technical difficulties uh, today for the mayor, and so section six in relation to um, what happens if the presiding member is the one experiencing the technical difficulties may also be worth. Um, fleshing out a little bit, although I assume obviously that um, as our current uh, standing orders would um, also continue to apply. So um, I, I guess I'm happy to move an amendment to so that we um, to point um, one um, so that um, it talks about um, that Council notes the draft guidelines as an attachment one. Um, uh, yes, through you, Echo, um, and we would we'll essentially undertake to come back to Council at the next meeting uh, with some refinements to these guidelines. They could be referred to as draft guidelines. I'll just ask a quick question on this. Can I, are you happy, CEO, that we are? doing what we need to under the regs if we have draft guidelines and continue to have um, online meetings in that next month period? Uh, I'm just looking electronically to the, the manager of governance. Uh, 
And I just, think the answer is yes. Just because the other option is if, if that does pose a problem, then we could approve them and then note that they need to be refined and, further, and brought back to further with further refinements. So maybe if the manager of governance could just give an indication whether there's any issue with having draft guidelines that haven't been adopted while we continue to have an online meeting. Through you, Mayor Cole, there's no statutory requirement due to the changes to the admin regs for us to have guidelines. Um, it was a suggestion by Welga that local governments have guidelines to govern their electronic meetings, and that's why we've um, prepared these uh, quickly and presented them to the committee and council because we are currently having um, electronic meetings. We've complied with all our statutory requirements in respect to having electronic meetings, but there is the issue that our um, meeting procedures, local law, and also the policy on council briefings, meetings and forums doesn't currently contemplate electronic meetings. So we're conducting a review of that um, as soon as possible. And so I think it would be fine to us for us to note the draft guidelines and then request that we complete this review and present it back to council as soon as possible. Thank you for that very clear advice. Um, Councillor Bonshevsky. And may I happy to put that as an amendment? Um, can we just get the wording? On the, on the shared screen there. Okay, through you, Mecca, can we all see that? So I've just changed that council notes the draft guidelines. Does it need to note that the guidelines will be brought to the next council meeting for approval? Through you, Mayor Cole, we're happy to, for that to be uh, added. And through you, Mayor Cole, it is the intention the mover of the amendment, though. Is that, do you think that needs to be explicitly stated or? Um, um, I'll be honest, I don't, I'm, I'm not particularly concerned. I think ultimately we have a draft document that both this council and the committee will note um, and that essentially. Um, is just okay, guidelines anyway, so, but oh, I'm happy okay, to put it as is. Let us need a seconder to the amendment. Seconded by Councillor Castle, do you wish to speak to the amendment? Um, I, I agree. I think I think given that they are just guidelines and we know there's going to be um, some tweaking around the edges over the next week or so well, until we settle in, um, I'm comfortable with proceeding with uh, you know, operating under draft guidelines right now. The only comment I would make is that we ensure that um, we are very clear with the community what what our procedures are, particularly around public question time, because there will be a lot of confusion as to how we're running things. Um, and um, it's a bit of a moving feast at the moment. But once we've sort of settled into a routine, we need to be very clear about what they can and how they can participate in um, our council meetings. Councillors, any further comments on the amendment? Okay, I'll put the amendment. All those in favour? Yep, full support for the amendment. We're back to the substantive. Does anyone wish to comment further on the substantive motion? Okay, I'll put it. All those in favour? That's unanimous. Um, thank you. That concludes the um, items of uh, the reports for this evening. And given that we don't have any uh, questions or motions, or I'm assuming no urgent business uh, or confidential items, we had a confidential attachments only, but we have dealt with those items without having to go the confidential attachments. So. Uh, that means we will conclude the meeting and the time is nine, uh, sorry, 7.48 p.m. So thanks very much, everybody, and apologies for the technical pitch and thank you to Deputy Mayor Susan Gontoszewski for stepping in while we lost Wi-Fi control. Good night, everyone.